Okay, Eric, so the test that I'm going to do is we have the rotary electrostatic converter here, um, basically the, the Carson rotating capacitor, and um, you know these operate out of phase. And so what I did was I put the DC motor back on uh, from the last test, and I have a constant current, constant voltage power DC power supply, which is going to run the motor on those two pins there coming out of one of the winding uh, the wire and I don't know how these are tapped but it'll show me an AC uh, sine wave on the scope and I got the scope hooked up to those so we can measure the uh, speed um, uh, okay so that's obviously coupled to the rotating capacitor and as the, the rotate the uh, movable uh, plates turn and the stationary ones obviously stay stationary Obviously, you know all this. This is just for the benefit of whoever's watching. <clears throat> and then I have uh, this scope right here set up, and we're going to be looking at the frequency. So when we apply uh, voltage potential, uh, the electrostatic potential uh, to this, will it um, cause a drag or not? And that's what we're going to look at. So this is the... Um, power supply that I put together uh, for my biohacking um, presentation on uh, electrostatically treating seeds um, for the purpose of uh, altering their genetic expression. Um, this goes to 10,000 volts. It's got this variac here which is 0 to 120 volts but roughly it's it's about a uh, 1 to 10 so it's a 10,000 volt uh, potential transformer. So when we're at 40 volts, it's at about 4,000 volts. When it's at 50 or 50 percent or 50 volts here, it's roughly at about 5,000 volts. And I confirmed that with this um, uh, BNK Precision um, high voltage probe, which goes up to 40,000 volts. And if this is 4,000, if this is on 40 here, that indeed does show me about 40 percent. And if it's about 50, it shows me about 50 per, or 5,000 volts. Okay, so the output, I have the negative uh, from the high voltage uh, potential supply going to the stationary plate on one half of the uh, capacitor uh, setup here. And I have the positive going to this alligator clip, which is just kind of... Um, you can see that the shaft there is just kind of resting inside of there. I don't want the um, alligator clip to hold on to it because it's going to offer too much friction. But as this rotates, you can see that it's a pretty friction-free contact and it just stays there. So that's sufficient for the test. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to crank this up. I think I have the... Uh, uh, power supply set to about 12 volts and uh, about 7 uh, amps um, you know so we're looking at about uh, 7 watts something like that so I'm going to turn it on and this is going to speed up We're just going to let it speed up until it kind of settles. And then on the scope, uh, 581 hertz. Okay, and we've got the average of 497. We're just going to let it go. Then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of clear this out so that it resets once it gets going. So I'm just going to let this run for a second to for it to settle at where it's going to be. Okay, so 12, um, 12 volts, 6.3 amps. Let's see if I can just... No, it wants, wants that current there. Okay, so 6.3... Okay, so about 12 volts, 
6.2 amps. So I'm just going to let this run for another second, a few seconds. I'm going to clear that again, and what it's going to do is it's going to reset the. Uh, Uh, averages here. I'm get rid of channel two. Bring this channel one down. Get a few more waveforms in there. <clears throat> so we're averaging about 598 hertz, 597. Okay, so once I turn the um, electrostatic power supply on and we have the high voltage that that uh, electrostatic potential from the negative to the positive or neutral to positive moving through the plates it should have a tendency to want to um, maintain them where the plates are in phase rather than out of phase which means we should see a load increase on the constant uh, current, constant voltage supply. So that might go to 0 0.63, 0 0.64, 0 0.65 with the electrostatics on, showing that it is causing a drag. And we should see that the uh, average and current um, speed of the DC motor should go down, obviously. So let's see if that indeed does happen. Well, I already know it does because I tested it, but this is just for the record here. Okay, so... Okay, this supply is already on. We're on zero. I'm going to bring it up to um, 1,000 volts, which is 10. Okay, and we don't really see anything different here. And when we get to about 4,500 volts, we actually get sparks across it. And that's what I found when I had the DC motor off. So I had it able to uh, spin as friction-free as possible to see if um, the plates would offer any resistance to me moving them out of phase or less resistance moving them in phase. Okay, so I'm just going to crank this up to about maybe 3. We're going to go up to, yeah, we'll just keep it at 3. And so we see 0 0.61, 0 0.62, so that's relatively unchanged. We have a speed of 595, no, 602. Yeah, 595 to 602. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this to 4,000, and as soon as we start getting some sparks, where we're getting some good electrostatic tension there, that's climbing. And the average speed here, I can clear that. Okay, I'm going to go up to 5. I'm going to go up to 55. Okay, we got more load here. And that speed is actually dropping. Okay, so we can see that. Okay, that voltage dropped and the current went up a little bit. We can see that when we're doing this, the speed is dropping down to the 580s. Okay, so we see that speed drop down to like 580 something. So I just turn this down back to zero. We can see the voltage is climbing. The current will probably drop down a little bit. And the speed is going to pick back up from the 580 hertz range up into the um, high 590s to low 600s. So yes, it does indeed. Um, saw it drop down to 0.62 so it does indeed cause a load which means that electrostatic potential is trying to force the plates into alignment and so I would say that that would be a successful demonstration in showing that and that's about all we got for right now